Hello again, viewers, and greetings, fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night, and welcome to episode four of my bee breeding guide. My attempt at an almost comprehensive tutorial and crash course in everything that I can get my hands on in bees for Minecraft. Uh, this does include the forestry bees as well as bees added by other mods like for instance extra bees and magic bees and uh, eventually there will be Greg Tech and Ars Magic and there's there's other bees as well so I'm going to be trying to cover every single thing that I can at least that I am aware of uh, if I miss anything uh, please let me know uh, if I don't get to things in one episode check my other episodes I may have gotten to them in the in the, the uh, future or previous episodes but anyway the first thing that we're going to be uh, attacking here is a thing called the apiarist machine and what this is is just a block that is used as a component in crafting other items however you can place it in the world it doesn't do anything it just sits there to make this, you are going to need some bronze ingots to make one of these sturdy casings and then use that with some copper and redstone to get one of these apiarist machines. And you just need a crafting table to do that. Nothing fancy there. Now, that machine is used in as a component in several other machines. However, before I get to that, I want to show you the apiarist database. This thing requires the carpenter, which requires power. Uh, and some water up here to make, but the recipe for it is some gold, tin, redstone, diamond, emerald, and glass panes. Um, and that will get you one of these things called the Apiarist Database. Uh, the recipe is kind of expensive, but you'll see why here in a moment. Unlike the Bealizer, which I went over in a previous episode, this doesn't actually tell you about specific bees that you are currently holding what it does is it refers to uh, bee species and bee branches that you have found so far so the tabs for this include or the pages for this rather include sorting by species by branch and then a, a, a page for the breeder i.e. yourself uh, now, actually, I'll start with the breeder here. Uh, what this does, I've never seen anything in this stats field. I don't know what it's for. But uh, on the left side, you'll see your profile, everything that you know about bees. And you can see that I only have 201 out of 212, and that's because there's some uh, bee stubs that are placeholders for future bees that are counted against the total as well as there are uh, three bees that you can only craft during specific days of the year, and I'm not messing with my computer clock to do that right now. Uh, it does list the number of branches that you have discovered. Obviously, I found all of them here. And also, there are some secret species, one of which uh, is called the Jaded Bee. Now, the Jaded Bee, unless your character's name is Jaded Cat you are not going to be able to breed it. It was created specifically as a reward for the efforts of one specific player in Minecraft. So the completionist in all of us hasn't got a chance uh, at getting it. Anyway, um, oh, I'm not done with this one. Uh, I wanted to cover the branches next. Now, the branches just gives a list when you click on a specific branch and then give an overview here it tells you the uh, basic rundown of what that branch is as well as I'm sure there's supposed to be a description however it's not finding one so it's just got this default thing here uh, if there is flavor text it will show up there but there there isn't I don't think there is flavor text oh there is there we go some flavor text but uh, the second tab here the species will tell you exactly what species there are in those branches and you can click on them and it will take you over to the final tab in this thing the species and the species tab 
tells you some basic information here and its classification any flavor text uh, the full classification uh, which there isn't one for every bee some of them just have one word some have nothing uh, the genome which I don't ever th think I've seen anything in here on any of the bees it's just a blank page but uh, the products it tells you what that bee can produce. For instance, this bee can produce honeycomb on average about every 5.1 minutes. So that's what that is, and any specialty things are shown down here. It tells you the climate that and the biomes that the current highlighted uh, pure bee will be able to uh, tolerate. And this is only referring to the pure bees, the, the purebred bees. Any hybrids or uh, uh, slightly out of sync bees or bees that you've genetically manipulated yourself to have other traits uh, will be different. This is only talking about the actual pure uh, bee. So this forest bee here likes normal temperature and normal humidity and uh, it gives a list of all the biomes which it is aware of that meet these conditions. Uh, any th bees that have tolerances will have multiple of these fields highlighted. But that's basically what that tab is. Next is resultant mutations. Now what this does is it tells you all of the types of breeding mechanics you can use in order to get the currently highlighted bee. I'm highlighting a hive bee that you can only get from the world so nothing is a resultant mutation for it whereas if i click on the noble here a resultant mutation for the noble bee is a cultivated and a common finally the further mutations this is the exact opposite this tells you what types of bees you can make using the currently highlighted bee and once again you can click on these to get the uh, other bees in here like that and that it'll it'll bring them up as uh, oh I seem to have well I do apologize about that I seem to have clicked on too many things all at once and it crashed the game but I'm back, and basically that was the gist of what the Apiers database is used for. And it seems to have cloned the database. Wow. Okay. Well, then I will pitch that. All right, moving on to the actual first machine that you can build. It is called the Apiers data bank and it is identical in all purposes and respects to the database except as a block that you can place in the world itself and the recipe for that includes one of those databases an apiarist machine some glass and a redstone and uh, it doesn't r run on power it just sits there and looks pretty all right the next thing is called the acclimatizer and what this does well i guess first i'll show you the recipe uh you will need some cans of water and some cans of lava. Uh, and you can get these cans by by filling them in a machine. Here, let me uh, recipe. Magma crucible, liquid transposer, squeezer, smeltery. There are several different ways of getting the fluids into the cans. So pick your favorite and make three of each and uh, make this recipe here and you will get one of these acclimatizers. Now, the acclimatizer is a nifty little gadget. Let's say you've got a uh, bee that doesn't like the desert, but you're only in the desert all the time. And you need to get that bee to work where you are. Well, what you can do is you can run it through this and make it like the desert. If you look at the green text on here, it says normal none, normal none. That's the temperature and the humidity. What that means is it is tolerant to normal temperatures and has no additional sway in either direction of to with additional tolerances. Same thing with the humidity, the T and H temperature humidity. But if I look over here on the tropical bee, it says temperature warm, both one humidity damp down one now what that means is 
for the temperature warm both one it means it can go in one stage up or down in temperature so it can deal with normal and hot as well as the warm for the humidity for the damp it says down one that means it can only deal with one stage down it can't go up there there is no humidity above up or above uh, damp rather but this will deal with normal humidity and the damp that it deals with typically what this acclimatizer does is it makes it so you can add those boasts and the downs and the ups to bees to give them tolerances to other conditions now the way this works is you toss the bee in there and you toss some sort of catalyst in here and then you can supply it with power uh, and that's mj power build craft power there now there are four different catalysts that you are going to need to use to do your manipulation the first one is water this changes it to be more tolerant of more humidity the sand makes it tolerant to less humidity. Lava makes it more tolerant to more temperature. And ice makes it more tolerant to less temperature. Uh, so I, you can take the uh, a, a hellish bee and make it tolerant to icy conditions, possibly. Uh, and you basically just put the stack of stuff in the acclimatizer and leave it go with the bee, come back and check on it when it's done uh, doing its uh, entire complement of items. And by the time it's done, it should have modified some or both of its stats. Now, these will slightly affect the temperature and these will slightly affect the humidity. But their primary goal is these are four dealing with the humidity and these are four dealing with the temperature. All right, moving on to the next thing called the indexer. The indexer does not require power uh, and it is just a block that sits in the world sort of like a chest. But the recipe for that is an apiarist machine, a bunch of chests, redstone, and a diamond to get you one of these things. And it holds, as I understand it, 1,000 B spots in here. And if I toss a couple Bs in, you can see that every once in a while there's a glitch where it'll say, all right, you toss this one in, but I don't know what you just did right then. All you have to do is exit out of it and come back in. Your, all the Bs that you can't see that you know you put in, they are in there. Now there are a couple ways to sort this. There's none. There's by species and there's by type. Obviously, I only have a couple of bees, so it doesn't really uh, make much of a difference. I could toss these in here, I suppose. Exit. Go back in. There's five bees. Species. Type. Okay, well, that didn't do anything at all. Oh, well. I was hoping. But it is basically a really big uh, apiar's chest. Next in line is the genetic machine. And like the apiarist machine, it can be placed in the world, but it is just used as a component for later machines. The recipe for that, first thing you're going to need to know is how to make this basic circuit board. And you'll need a carpenter with some water supplied to it. And you will need six redstone and one tin to get you one of those things. And then once you have that basic circuit board, you put it into just any old crafting table. Along with an apiarist machine from over there. Some lapis and some iron ingots. And you'll get one of these genetic machines. Now this genetic machine, like I said, is used for additional uh, purposes. So the first one we have here is called the gene pool. And I'll show you the recipe for that here. The gene pool requires four of these tanks, which a tank is just a box of glass like that. I, I should have included a recipe for the tank in here, but that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and one more glass, as well as redstone, gold ingots, and one of those genetic machines to get you a gene pool. This gene pool is kind of neat in that uh, let me turn this off. 
Uh, and I will grab a couple bees. You toss bees in here, and they will get squished. F and all of their genetic material will get stored over here. Now, a drone is worth less than a princess. A princess is worth less than a queen. And all the bees are worth more if you have run them through a, a bee -alyzer in order to uh, identify them properly. Now, the gene pool does hold a certain amount of liquid DNA. However, it fills up really quick. You can see I just identify or I just squeezed two princesses and it's half full already so you can slurp it out and store it in a tank of some sort and it will keep this from filling up all the way now this does require build craft power to run but it doesn't chew through it all too terribly quickly and it has some internal storage all right next up is called the sequencer the sequencer, the first thing you're going to need to know is the actual sequencer itself. And that is some glowstone, some glass, redstone, and one of those genetic machines. But in order to use the sequencer, you are also going to have to use these things called templates. A template requires four glass panes and a honeydew. Early on, you're most likely to be getting honeydew from something called a noble bee, and that is a, a fairly early bee breeding uh, uh, endeavor. You can get to that pretty quick. Uh, usually about a day's worth of breeding, you can get a bunch of these just starting from scratch, not having any bees at all. But the sequencer does require build craft power. I should mention that. Uh, and what you do is you toss bees over here. And you toss in a blank template. The blank template will then get assessed, or, or get stamped rather, by the species of bee that you put in. Whether it's a hybrid with imperfect traits, it doesn't matter. It'll say, oh, you have a tropical queen. So I am going to make a, come on, come on. Ta-da! Oh, no, it's still blank. Well, it will eventually make a tropical template. And I guess I could... Uh, oh, let's just see if it happens after the end of this cycle. If it doesn't, I'll just wait until it's done. But as you can see, it says tropical right there. So it knows that it's trying to uh, get the tropical. I think this means that it's 50% done. Okay, all right. I thought it was a one-pass instant gratification thing but it says all right i've got some bees that have that tropical trait so let's make the tropical template now the quality of the template is uh, calculated on the creation of it you cannot change as far as i know the quality of the template uh so you could get awful you could get good you could get excellent you could get uh average this is actually the best template I've ever gotten because I seldom use these templates. But I'm going to take that with me to show you the splicer. And it is nighttime. Let me make it morning so it's not as dark for you guys. All right. The splicer does require diamond, glass, more glass for these tanks. Uh, so that would be 16, 17, 18 glass total. Uh, one redstone and the genetic machine again to make a splicer now uh, I have a tropical princess in here for I guess I was planning on doing something with it But the splicer runs on power and in order to use it You are going to need to supply it some of this liquid DNA, which is why you pipe it out of that thing What you do is you take a template bing put it right there and you toss in a bee that is of a different species than the template. I should mention that you can only get the base hive bees in there. And that does not include the magic bees. So we're talking the forest, the meadows, the marshy 
uh, the tropical, the water, the rocky, and I'm missing one. Um, modest. The modest from the desert. Haha, -ha, I knew I'd get it. Anyway, uh, I've got here a tropical template. So if I want to change a B to a tropical B, all I have to do is toss it in here and it will give this little animation which takes a little while to do and it doesn't always happen on the first try so I'm going to cut here and wait for it to finish so you can see what it looks like as a result I'll be right back alright this should be close let's see if I get it hey it happened excellent so now I have a tropical princess when before I had a forest princess. So let's compare the stats of this tropical princess with a a uh, a purebred one that you get from just uh, bringing in from any eye or after a long haul of actual breeding. First off, right off the bat, you can see several differences just right here alone. But let's uh, run these through the Bealizer and hop these back and forth. Even some of the secondary traits and attributes are different. Uh, let's put these over here. Some of those are different. The output isn't really different. But what this splicer is good for is basically... Let's say that you need a specific type of bee, just a base bee for some other breeding project, but all you've got is a handful of some other type. You, uh, but you do have a template. You can take this template and turn that other type into the type you're needing to get some quick breeding done, and then you can worry about stabilizing the line later. It is used for making a temporary version of that species um like like i said it's not a perfect clone and and even a good quality one as you could see didn't really have uh a full effect on it i think you'd have to have an excellent one and some luck in order to get an exact duplicate i don't think i've ever uh gotten a duplicate off of an excellent quality one but uh, that is pretty much it for what I needed to cover in this episode. Uh, the startup machines that you're going to need. Uh, well, the I guess the second tier machines that you're going to need. In the next episode, I will be covering the advanced machines. And then after that, I'll be going over the, uh, the alveary as well as uh, some frames. But, uh... That's going to have to be it for this one. So, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I will do my best to get back to you. Uh, if you like this video and like what I'm doing here, please feel free to give it a like. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my next stuff comes out. Now, I am making this map available for download because uh, aside from th these machines that I have here, I have set up an entire a series of other uh, worlds that you can get to through Mistcraft linking books that demonstrate the actual uh, bee breeding uh, l chains and what you need to do for the different branches of bees and uh, the output and all that kind of stuff, but I will also be covering that in this series. So you can download that. If you do choose to do this, uh, please note that I am using the Unleashed mod pack as part of the Feed the Beast. So go ahead and get Feed the Beast. Even if you don't want to download this, go get Feed the Beast because it is awesome. But... Uh, yeah, that's uh, going to pretty much have to be it for this episode. So thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.